Thanks for tuning in to Agile SOC On Demand on AgileSOC.com. Uh, this is part three in our SVUnit demo series where we help people get started with the SVUnit uh, unit test framework. I'm Neil Johnson. So the purpose of this video is to show how people can use SVUnit um, for unit testing UVM components. Now because of the tight coupling uh, that UVM uh, provides, um, to enable quick integration and easy control of UVM-based test bench, uh, isolating a UVM component in a unit test is not a trivial uh, exercise. But in this video, you'll see that the isolation is possible uh, and valuable for eliminating bugs in components uh, before they're integrated with others uh, as part of a larger test bench. Uh, so to start, we'll look at a few slides that describe the run flow in a UVM component unit test. Now the run flow is probably a little different uh, than what people are used to, uh, so I think it's a good place to start. Um, from there we'll jump into the demo uh, where I'll walk through a finished unit test example uh, for a simple component. And it's a component that's, that just takes a transaction from an input port, uh, does some very basic transformation, and puts that uh, transformed uh, transaction to an output port. Uh, and from that basic example, you'll see how we uh, include the utilities that have been added to SVUnit specifically for testing UVM components. Uh, we'll see how, how to instantiate a UVM component in a unit test. Uh, and then we'll see how to enable a component, uh, iteratively drive it through the UVM run phases, and finally disable it at the end of a unit test. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the run flow first. So in a simulation, uh, all UVM components go through a few of the, of the common UVM phases first. Now there's four to start, uh, which are build, connect, uh, end of elaboration, and start a simulation. So for all the components that are instantiated uh, in our collection of unit tests, uh, or what would be a collection of unit tests, we only have one unit test here, um, these common phases uh, would apply just as they normally do in a UVM test bench. Uh, all the phase methods uh, are called for each component that we have. The first difference it happens as we enter the run phases. Now this is where we're choosing to call uh, the phase methods of only one component. Uh, in this case our green component under test uh, and none of the other components that have been instantiated. Um, actually have their run uh, phase methods called uh, and those would be the idle components that we have up in the corner here. So when it comes to executing the run phases you'll see that uh, only the applicable phase methods of our component under test are called uh, and the phase methods on our idle components um, aren't called at all uh, which obviously is, is what makes them idle. Uh, components. <laughs> now depending on what we want to do our component under test can be taken through the run phases uh, just once or multiple times uh, by jumping backward from shutdown to reset. Uh, so if we jump back um, we then run ahead again uh, through the configure and main and through the shutdown. So that's a cycle that can happen repeatedly. And when we're done with the component, we put it back on the shelf um, with the other idle components. Um, we can then load a new component um, for testing at that point. Uh, or if we're done testing all the components we're interested in in our test suite, um, we can kill the same and generate a report at this point. So that's an overview of the run flow. Uh, now we will jump uh, to the demo code. Uh, and I will show you how all of this works. So I'm just going to do some quick uh, cleanup here <laughs> that I forgot to do last time I was here. Uh, that's good. So starting in our um, SVUnit code directory. Now before we get too far into the demo, uh, I'll remind people that this is the third video in the series. Um, to avoid getting lost, if you haven't seen at least the first uh, video called Up and Running, 
uh, you should probably go there first and then come back. Um, you can find up and running on agilesoc.com and it goes through uh, most of the basics that we'll do here um, without much explanation. So it is a good place to start. Uh, so first thing to do as always um, is the setup of the SVUnit environment. We are in the SVUnit code directory so this is where we will source the, um, the setup file. Now we're going to go to the directory where the demo, uh, where the example demo lives, uh, which is examples, UVM, simple model. And we'll do a quick ls of this directory, and you'll see uh, as part of the example, we have uh, a simple model.sv, uh, we've got a simple transaction, uh, and we have a simple model unit test. And we'll spend most of our time uh, here looking at the unit test. So let's crack that open. Simple model unit test. And we're going to scroll down a bit here. The first thing we do here that's different uh, than what I've shown in the other demos, uh, pardon me, uh, is, is including this file. Um, this is a file, uh, svunit uvm test.sb. This is where we have the, the special code that's used to control the uvm components. Um, we won't look at this code, but we will see um, further down how this code is used uh, in our unit tests. Scrolling down further, we will see our um, unit under test, which is a simple model. Uh, and we'll also see some other stuff here that we're going to use to interact with our with our simple model uh, in our test methods. So we've got um, uh, two different FIFOs here, one for the input and one for the output. Uh, and we've got a put port and a get port that we're going to use to interact with those FIFOs. Scrolling down the to the constructor, um, you'll see our instance of our uh, our unit under test here, our simple model. Um, you'll see that we're creating the ports and FIFOs for the input and output. Uh, and then you'll see that we're making our connections. So we've got a little mini test bench here. Um, nothing real important has happened yet until we get to this stage here. Um, this is where we are deactivating the component um, using a method defined in that SVUnit UVM test file. Uh, so deactivating the component for us means we're putting it in that pile of, of idle red components that we saw in the, in the run flow slides. That's the end of the constructor. Now we're going to go down to the setup um, to the next two important things that we're going to do. Uh, so in the setup, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to actually reactivate our component. So at this point, it's no longer an idle red component. Um, it's our green unit under test uh, that is directly connected to the to the uh, to the phases in our test. And once it's active, we can start doing the testing, and that's done by uh, calling this method uh, svunit uvm test instance. And from this point, we are running. And now we can start invoking our test methods. Now you'll see in this file that we have um, four different tests defined. Uh, this is the first one here. I'm not going to go through each of these tests. Um, they're all pretty simple. Uh, but the thing to notice in each test uh, is a call to svunit uvm start and finish. So here's the start, uh, and here's the finish. You'll see that in each of the tests. Calling these methods effectively uh, is what pushes our component through the, the run phases, through the reset, configure, uh, main, and shutdown phases that, that I showed in the slides earlier. And as I scroll down here, you'll see that each of the tests I have uh, make this call to start and finish. That's the second test. There's the third test again with the call to start and, and finish. 
uh, and our final test. Uh, again, start and finish. Now the last notable thing that we're going to do in our unit test um, happens in the teardown. Uh, this is the last stop and this is uh, ending our unit test with, uh, with another call to deactivate our UVM components. So uh, what was our green unit under test is now back to the idle pile. Um, is a red component back in the, in the pile of idle components. So that's a unit test. Let's run uh, this unit test now to see what happens. So I have instructions for doing that in the README file. Um, the first thing we got to do here is export uh, an environment setting for our UVM home. I've already done that uh, in the background. We are going to build our SD unit framework now. Uh, again, something I show, uh, I talk about more in more detail in the in the first two videos, but that's going to build our framework. Uh, now we're going to run it. Uh, you can see here that we're using VCS. Um, it's not simulator dependent though. So we'll run this and we'll just take a look at the log output. Uh, so the logging isn't really clear here. This needs to get cleaned out of cleaned up a bit, but I will point out our four tests that are running. So the first test here, get port not null. Uh, second, get port not active. Uh, get port active, pardon me. Put port active. Transformation test. Uh, and then at the end, I'll, I'll just highlight the, the results uh, from the test runner uh, is a pass uh, for running those four tests against our UVM component. So that's really it for the demo. Um, we'll just jump back to the slide deck here to finish up. Uh, just a quick review of what we covered. Uh, we took a look at the run flow of the UVM component unit test um, and how it differed uh, from what you might do in a normal UVM test bench. Uh, we saw some of the utilities that come with SVUnit uh, that are used to test the UVM components, the methods that we saw invoked uh, in our unit tests. Uh, then we saw how to instantiate a component, um, enable it, uh, iteratively drive it through the UVM run phases, and finally disable it at, in, in the teardown. Um, if you want to download and try the demo yourself, uh, you're welcome to. You can get a hold of me at neil.johnson at agilesoc.com uh, for information on how to do that. That takes us to the end of part three uh, of the SVUnit demo series on AgileSOC.com. I'm Neil Johnson, and thanks for watching.